Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and this is the 13 inch 2020 MacBook Pro. Now this is the top of the line version and it was ordered the day Apple announced it, but it took a while to get here because it's custom. So it has the top of the line 2.3 gigahertz quad core 10th generation Intel Core i7 CPU or processor. It turbo boosts up to 4.1 gigahertz. It also has 16 gigabytes of LP DDR4X memory, as well as a one terabyte SSD. So let's go ahead and open the box up and take a closer look. Let's take the cover off the box here. There we go. And here is the MacBook Pro. And we'll talk more about all of the other specs and things in just a moment, but let's take a look at the box or what's in the box rather. And we've got our USB-C to USB-C charge cable that comes with it. And then we've got our information or literature that comes with it. So let's take a look at this. We've got a little pamphlet that says, welcome to your MacBook Pro. We've got space gray stickers to match the space gray MacBook Pro. And it looks like there's just a little spacer in there. Now we also have the charging brick. Let's take a closer look at this and see what's included. Like I said, this is the top of the line version. Normally I just slide these out. It's not cooperating. So this is a paper instead of plastic. So it looks like it's just going to rip when I take it off. So you can see it's a 61 watt USB-C power adapter. So that's the one that's included. There's no additional cable or anything. You can pop this off by an extension cable if you want to do that, but it's not included with it. And it's something that I miss from the older MacBooks, and I've kept that part around so that I can use this as sort of an extension cable. Now let's take the wrapper off and take a closer look. And just like you would expect, it's basically the same feeling as the previous MacBook Pro. And I'll compare that a little bit later on. So we have Thunderbolt 3 ports on the left-hand side. We've got two of them. And then on the right-hand side, again, we have two more along with a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. On the bottom, there's nothing really other than the four feet you would expect and a couple vents, one on each side. So you have a vent here and a vent on this side. And then that's about it. So it's nice and lightweight for the most part. It's 3.1 pounds or 1.4 kilograms. So let's go ahead and open it up. And we'll take this sheet off of it and it turns on right away. Now we'll set this up in a moment, but let's go over some of the specs. Now the display is the 13 inch retina display with true tone. It's 2560 by 1600 with 227 pixels per inch. It also still has that 720p FaceTime camera in the front. So we'll take a closer look at that in a minute. Now it has the touch bar along with touch ID, which is really nice and the all new, well, sort of new, but old, scissor keyboard. So it's no longer a butterfly keyboard. The keys have nice travel just like they do on the current MacBook Pro lineup, the MacBook Air lineup. Everything is now gone to this particular setup. We also have the large trackpad, which is always nice. And then that's pretty much it. There's nothing terribly new other than the specs that I've mentioned and this new keyboard, but let's take a closer look. It should have better speakers and a better microphone as well. Now for a quick size comparison, before we set this up, here is the 2016 MacBook Pro. So let me close this and you can get a better idea side by side what it looks like. Now the new one is slightly thicker here's side by side. So you can see that it is a little bit thicker than before, but I don't think most people will mind because it has that newer keyboard in it. So if we open the old one, this is the 2016 MacBook pro. And then here is the 2020 MacBook pro. And they basically look the same from top down. But when it comes to the keyboard, there's a huge difference. Now on the old keyboard, the key travel was very small or very minimal. And the throw on the keyboard was very little due to that butterfly mechanism where Apple was focusing on being super thin and lightweight. Now on the new keyboard, the key travel is much greater. It has much better feedback and should be more durable over time. So you have additional travel and basically it's just a return to what we've always known and loved. Now let's go ahead and go through the setup and we'll select our language here. Then we'll click next. Then you want to select where you live. So for me, it's the United States. 
Then you want to select your Wi-Fi network. Then we have the data and privacy. We can learn more, click continue. And I don't want to transfer any information now from my old Mac to this Mac. So we'll just click continue. And then we need to sign in with our Apple ID. Once you've signed in with your Apple ID, you'll have terms and conditions and you'll need to agree in order to use the Mac. And here we can set our password for the computer itself. Now on this screen, it says find my, and it's just telling you that if you have find my on your phone or something like that, this will be added. So if the laptop or the MacBook is stolen, it's activation locked and you can locate it. Now we can do express setup. So we'll go ahead and do that. Now on this page, we can either share or not share our crash and usage data with app developers. And here we have screen time. We can set it up or set it up later. We'll just click continue and here's Siri. So if we want to ask a question, we can do that or we can turn it off. It's up to you. And we also have, Hey, and then our assistant. So we can set that up later or now we'll click continue. Hey, Siri. Hey, Siri, open the documents folder. Hey Siri, show my downloads. Hey Siri, what's the weather? Hey Siri, what does the rest of my day look like? And now it's set up and we can just use Hey, and then that phrase in order to ask our assistant to do any of those things for us. Now here we can either improve Siri and dictation or choose not to. So I'm going to say not now. I don't want to share my audio recordings and this is all your files and photos in iCloud. And this is something I use often, but I'm not going to check right now. I can do it later because it will take a long time to install all of that information and download it here. So I'll just do that later. But if you have a new Mac and you're going from an old one, you can do that. And then here is file vault disk encryption. So you can turn this on or turn it off and that's up to you. And now we have touch ID so we can set this up. It's pretty simple. We just tap on this like this, just like we did on touch ID iPhones. If you have one of those, or you used to have one of those, and then it says, just use the edges of your finger. You just move your finger around and it authenticates your finger. It's one of the best things about this Mac. Now, why it doesn't have face ID yet. I'm not sure maybe in the future it will. And then we can set up Apple pay or set it up later. I don't really want to use that right now. And then we can choose our look light mode, dark mode, or auto. I tend to use auto. So it switches when it gets darker outside, it switches to the dark mode. Now we have true tone and true tone is not something I like to use on MacBooks because I want it to look as real to what the actual image looks like. So I don't want to use true tone and have the image look, I guess, paper white when you see white. So I don't want it on but I'll turn it off later. And that allows the display to look nice when you're reading something, but it really messes things up if you're trying to do photography or video editing. Now we're at the home screen and what I'm going to do is install a bunch of apps, get this ready so we can run some benchmarks. So we'll run some benchmarks and compare it with the older MacBook pro that I showed you earlier, as well as the 16 inch MacBook pro from 2019. Now here we have the 2016 MacBook pro, which was the top of the line at the time, 13 inch, and it's got the Core i7 3.3 gigahertz dual core CPU with 16 gigs of LP DDR3 RAM. Then we have the 2020 13 inch MacBook Pro with the Core i7 quad core 2.3 gigahertz and 16 gigabytes of LP DDR4 RAM. And then we have the 2019 16 inch MacBook Pro with the octa core core i9 2.4 gigahertz with 32 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM. So we'll run a CPU test and then a GPU test as well. Now, as you can see all the different scores for Geekbench with the oldest being the slowest with single core at 748 and the fastest multi-core being the 2019 since it has eight CPU cores with 7,276. Now let's take a look at the speed test or the compute test with metal. Now metal has finished on all of these computers and as expected, the 2016 came in the lowest at 5,748. The 2020 13 inch came in at 10,328 and the 2019 with its dedicated GPU came in at 30,248. Unigen Heaven is installed on all of these devices and I have the settings exactly the same ultra on all of them. And let's see what we get here. 
Now, I would expect the 2019 to be the best as far as frame rates, just because it has a dedicated GPU. So let's see what it does though. Now with the same settings on all of them on the 2016 MacBook pro, I've got 13 frames per second. Whereas on the 2020 13 inch MacBook pro, I've got 30 to 37, 38, depending on which one we're looking at. And then on the 2019 MacBook pro, we're at over 127, depending on what we're at. So anywhere from 70 to 127 is what I saw on the 2019 16 inch MacBook pro. So you can see the difference between all of them here. Now Cinebench is loaded on all of these. Let's go ahead and run Cinebench and see what we get. Cinebench completed. And as you would expect, the oldest came in at the lowest at 899 points. The 2020 13 inch came in at 1,943 and the 2019 came in at 3,480. Now, finally, I want to do an export test to show you how quickly they can export video compared to one another. Now that all the generated media files are deleted, I've got background rendering turned off. And so it may be a little bit faster if you had that, but let's go ahead and export this. We'll export it to H.264. So they're all set up the same way. We'll go next. You can see they will all be 1.87 gigabytes. And then what we'll do is save them and hit start. So we'll go here, hit save, save and start. And let's see how long this takes to export. Now you can see there was definite advantages for the 2019 MacBook Pro 15 inch. And of course the 2020 MacBook Pro 13 inch was much faster than the old 2016. So if you're thinking of upgrading from a 2016 and you do video editing, either of the 2019 or 2020 MacBook Pros are worth that jump. I think as far as the time it saves in exporting video. Now let's take a look at the CPU, as you can see, it averaged somewhere around the three gigahertz mark, give or take, depending on what it was doing. And it did get pretty warm, but it was keeping the temperature low enough that it could keep the CPU up at a higher frequency. Now, during this test, the fans are spinning up probably close to their maximum speed. So take a listen. Now they're not terribly loud, but it came in at about 50 decibels. Now the 2020 13 inch MacBook pro, if you select the core I seven option has a one terabyte SSD. So let's see how fast that SSD is. So let's take a look at our options. We'll use a one gigabyte stress test. So let's go ahead and hit start. And right away, the write speeds are 2,632.9 read speeds are a little bit lower at 2,300 give or take that's megabytes per second. So two gigabytes or gigabytes per second, which is pretty crazy. So 2,600 or so and 2,300 for read speed. Now, as far as the FaceTime camera, as Apple calls it, it's only 720p. So if we record from it, you'll see the video is just not that great, but the audio should be pretty good. It has all new studio mics inside the MacBook Pro lineup and even the MacBook Air lineup, and they sound pretty good compared to this microphone. So here's this microphone that I use for every video. And now here's the MacBook Pro microphones. And let me know which one you like best in the comments below. Now the new MacBook Pro is on the right and let's take a listen to the speakers because they should be greatly improved over the previous generation. The 2019 16 inch had great speakers. So let's take a listen to this. This is the video I just exported and I have the volume set to the same level. So we've got it about halfway on both. So listen to this. Also have it remind you or let you know if you're, if it's sensing an arrhythmia. So you've got ECG here. So that, so have it remind you or let you know if you're, if it's sensing an arrhythmia. So you've got ECG here. Now we'll turn them all the way up. Nice feature that you'll have in that country. Now this is up to your government, whether or not you can have this and Apple has to work with them on that.
that's a nice feature that you'll have in that country. Now, this is up to your government whether or not you can have this, and Apple has to work with them on that. And so, and so the speakers sound a little bit louder on the new one. They did rattle a little bit at full volume, but they definitely have a nicer bass sound on the newer one. So I'm not sure if you could hear that, but go back and play and hear that, and hopefully you can hear the difference between both of them. Now, as far as the keyboard experience on both, uh, they're very different. So let's take a listen to the old one and then the new one. And as you can see, the sound is very different. And of course I type a little bit different than most people, but I get the job done and you can hear the difference between the two. And I think the new one sounds a lot better and it definitely has a lot more feedback. So when you push down, you feel a lot more pushback from it. And if you're a touch typist, that will be great for you because you'll have a, a much better ability to type. Now the new display goes up to 500 nits of brightness. I'm not sure that you're going to notice the difference. If I turn them all the way up here, you'll see here's the touch bar. Let's go into the brightness. We'll turn it all the way up and they look about the same. The new one might be a little bit brighter, but basically they're very similar. You'll be able to see the new one a little bit better outside. It has P3 wide color gamut. And as far as connectivity, the new one also has 802.11 AC, Wi-Fi, B, G, A, N, and AC, and also has Bluetooth 5.0. It does not have Wi-Fi 6, so keep that in mind. Now, the only thing I don't really care for on this MacBook Pro is the touch bar. It's not something I really use. In fact, I'd rather have regular buttons up there, but some people love it. I'm just someone that doesn't really use it at all. Now, with this MacBook, it seems to be holding up well as far as speed and everything else and thermals. It seems to be cooling itself properly and it's staying at higher speeds without overheating. So Apple did a good job of keeping it cool. As far as that goes, it seems to be handling it well. Now, if you're trying to consider this versus say the 16 inch, well, it really depends on what you're doing. If you're exporting video, the 16 inch is going to be much faster, but if you're just typing documents and things, you may just want to look at the MacBook air. If you'd like to see a separate comparison with that particular device, let me know in the comments below. I'll leave a link to this wallpaper. It's a pretty standard Mac wallpaper, but if you'd like it, I'll link it in the description also for iOS. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as always. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.